One of the common causes of mortality in polytrauma is uncontrollable hemorrhage. Embolization can save several such patients. We have uh, several lit literature available that proves that embolization is a scientific and a modern way to stabilize a bleeding patient which in turn gives us better outcomes. What is embolization? It is the deliberate occlusion of a vessel through the endovascular route aimed at producing a therapeutic response. Thus in several situations we can convert a, uh, a emergency surgery to an elective one and in several others we can avoid surgery altogether. A catheter is taken either from a vessel in the groin or from the arm into the vessel that is bleeding. Then, depending on the size of the vessel, we will use an embolic agent which is appropriate. In a situation like this, we would use coils. A coils are placed both proximal and distal to the side of the bleeding vessel. Once this is done, the bleeding segment is trapped and the bleeding is arrested. If the vessel that is bleeding is smaller, if the vessel that is bleeding is smaller, then the catheter that is, is navigated into the bleeding vessel itself and the vessel blocked by the injection of particles. Most often, these are gel foam or polyvinyl alcohol sponge. What's the advantage? It's a percutaneous and a minimally invasive procedure, so we don't need general anesthesia. In hemodynamically significant bleeding, one can find out the site of bleeding in close to 90% of the patient. You can convert an emergency to an elective surgery and you can avoid multiple blood transfusions, all of which contribute to the survival of the patient. So let's start from the head all the way down to the legs and see what embolization can do. Here is a patient who came with massive epistaxis following road traffic accident. The angiogram shows a pseudoaneurysm of the internal maxillary artery. The next slide shows the vessel has been embolized and the patient stabilized. Here's an example of a patient who developed a large pseudoaneurysm from the uh, internal carotid artery following trauma with massive episodic epistaxis. The second picture shows that the internal carotid artery has been embolized and the patient lives even today. This is to show you the problem that happens when somebody tries to ligate the external carotid artery after trauma and uh, here we see that now the patient continues to have epistaxis through collaterals arising from the ophthalmic artery making this an extremely difficult bleeding vessel to access. This example of a 32 year old male was hacked on the neck and his vertebral artery was cut and the center that referred this patient to us packed the wound and sent it to us. The angiogram shows no filling of the vertebral artery. A super selective injection shows extravasation of contrast into the gauze pack. We take a catheter and we embolize the vertebral artery at this point. But we know that this is not the end of the story because the other end of the vertebral artery would have retracted. A microcatheter injection shows that there is extravasation of contrast from the retracted segment of the vertebral artery proximal to the site of the injury. This is after coiling of that segment also. The patient's bleeding was completely arrested. We took all the gauze and the dressing and the pack and the patient could go home alive. There is a patient who had a cancer of the tongue and ended up with a massive carotid blowout. Again a fatal condition. The images show you the sequence of events. The angiograph with the pressure got stressing in the wound. The angiogram when it was removed showing active extravasation of contrast. And a third picture which shows the internal carotid artery after occlusion. Here is a patient who had a pseudoaneurysm after an injury to the scalp. And this patient uh, had massive bleeding when someone attempted surgery at this site. The vessel was embolized and then the lesion excised. This is a patient again with massive hemoptysis following trauma. Bleeding is seen to be actively 
demonstrated from the superior thyroid uh, artery which was embolized successfully and the patient survived. Let's come to the thoracoabdominal region. This is a patient who developed a massive uh, road traffic and um, injury where his liver was ruptured and the patient was brought to us hypotensive. The angiogram shows active extravasation of contrast from the ruptured liver. Embolization again in this case was a life saving procedure. The patient did not need any surgery at all. This is a large pseudoaneurysm from the liver, again a very difficult lesion to treat which is super selectively catheterized and embolized. Another example of a pseudoaneurysm arising from the splenic artery which was again catheterized, embolized successfully saving a life. Here is a patient who had a stab injury in the abdomen, came hypotensive, angiography shows active bleeding from the small bowel. This is a super selective catheter injection showing the bleeding vessel and this is the same vessel after embolization. This is after a renal trauma, active extravasation of contrast from the middle pole artery and the angiogram shows the effect of embolization where only that vessel is taken and the other vessels are spared pelvic injuries. Pelvic fractures can often be associated with massive exsanguinating hemorrhage because of tear to the internal iliac artery like in this case where the internal iliac artery is showing active extravasation of contrast. The vessel was embolized with multiple coils. There is a patient who developed a massive uh, AV fistula in the a region of the buttocks following a stab injury. These are the pictures as we embolize the fistula and this is the end result after embolizing the fistula completely again the patient continues to do well. Extremity embolization. This is a patient who has then hemophilia and following which he was having a rapidly enlarging hematoma in that time. Angiography shows the point of active bleeding from a branch of the profunda and the picture in the, on the right side shows the effect of embolization. This is a patient who fell onto the gate and developed an injury to the dorsal artery of the penis and uh, this extravasation of contrast that produced a huge hematoma in the perineal region. The second slide shows the effect of embolization. Another patient was massively enlarging girth in the femur following a fracture. Angiography shows active bleeding from the profunda femoris. And this shows the effect of embolization. This is another patient who is actively bleeding after a compound fracture uh, in the vessels of the tibia and the fibula. You can see the pseudoaneurysm arising from the posterior tibial artery. And the second slide shows the embolization when the vessel alone is taken off. Another example of a large pseudoaneurysm after a fracture and a patient had a foot drop. The anterior tibial artery was involved in this case and the vessel was successfully embolized and the patient continued to do well. Another example of a similar injury in the forearm where the ulnar artery was injured and embolized. Another device that's used in aneurysm of an, of an artery which cannot be sacrificed is a stent graft. The stent graft excludes the aneurysm. This is a patient who had a massive pseudoaneurysm from the external iliac artery and the stent graft was curative and life saving Another example of a large aneurysm arising from the co common iliac artery on the right side which is treated with a stent graft. So thus to conclude endovascular procedures are the best way to stabilize a hemodynamically unstable patient and interventional radiology becomes an important part of the trauma team when the aim is zero, zero mortality. The faster one embolizes the better and a less number of uh, transfusions, the better for the patient because it would mean less complications.